Today, we are in a suburb of Detroit, Michigan. This massive monolith of a building before us is the remains of the Northland Center Mall, which was not only the world's largest regional shopping center in America when it opened in 1954, it was also the world's first. There was gunplay tonight, bullets flying around at Northland. Police assigned to this mall working undercover actually saw the suspects holding someone up. Then they tried to stop them by crashing their unmarked surveillance car into the suspect's car as they were trying to flee. Then so when things got really chaotic, shots rang out, shoppers, workers ran for cover, and when the shooting was over, the two suspects were down. Sounds like there just wasn't enough security here for the hundreds of people that showed up for this event. The codes for Kids Drive at Northland Mall put on by WJLB 98FM ended early after the crowd started fighting and firing guns. People were getting pushed. They had to keep stopping on um, my air, letting them know, like, you know, you guys have to calm down. They just wasn't listening. It was just the chaos, so we had to end early. Not unlike taking a, a shopping trip into a combat zone. Now, if you ever want to take home a piece of Northland Mall, right? Now is your chance. The Southfield Mall is having a liquidation auction for items that are still inside. Northland Mall closed down April 15th, but it's opening its doors back up to get rid of some final items. Store after store, empty. Blank spaces where Foot Locker, Champ, and Donna Sachs used to be. Target and Macy's also gone. Retail landmark is coming down in Southfield. This is the beginning of the demolition of the Northland Mall. For the two years after closing its doors, demolition is finally underway at the Northland Mall in Southfield. The beginning of the end for the Northland Mall complex in Southfield. In Southfield, Kristen Pierce, the now Detroit. Detroit suburbs range outward from the center of town for 25 or 30 miles. There are huge shopping centers to make life convenient. This one's the world's largest. It has more than 100 separate stores surrounded by parking space for 10,500 cars. Designer outlet. Is that a t shirt from someone? <laughs> the concept of the shopping mall was born from the mind of architect Victor Gruen, who believed a shopping center should resemble a city where shopping would become pleasure rather than a chore, and that it should go beyond the commercial needs by taking advantage of public areas and realize an architectural concept. He pitched the idea to Hudson's department store, who was looking to branch out from their downtown Detroit headquarters, and after scouring the suburbs for the right location, this land became the chosen first area. Built at a cost of $25 million, the center received over 300 applications for its initial 80 storefronts. Oh, this is cool. Uh, printer. This was like a graphics shop. So here's a whole bunch of yeah, graphics stuff. Some little kids thing. Comics. The building also included a bank, post office, and auditoriums, all surrounded by 8,344 space parking lots. This store is like super deep. Scattered about the mall was artwork, fountains, landscaping, and a series of six sculptures commissioned by Hudson's, which included Joseph Anthony McDowell's Moby Dick, Lily Saarinen's Noah, and most famously, Marshall Frederick's The Boy and the Bear. This is 
this was. It looks like another jeweler's. At least that's what that sign says. The mall would expand twice in the following two decades. This is the tunnel system installed below the concourse, which allowed easy delivery access to all stores. Spider-Man game. In 1975, the mall was completely enclosed, about the same time JCPenney's built their anchor store. By this time, the annual shoppers to the mall reached 18 million. Oh, these are uh, old Kino things. Food court. The food court was added in 1991. For that, Hudson's had its own full-service dining room with a staff of 50 and seating for 325 guests. The restaurant also featured annual back-to-school fashion shows and, in 1958, the current Miss America, Marilyn Vanderberg, made an appearance. The dining room closed in 1997. Other restaurants in the mall before the food court included a Peter Pan and Maple House. Here was a subway right here. Here's part of a mannequin that's very destroyed. There's another part. Dude, somebody, this, every window has been smashed. And then of course there's a peen they had to draw. privacy thing but still yeah that's good they must have just had some sort of problems check it out though the ladies one doesn't and there's no sign either so it was just like the dudes or they just knew they they couldn't do the ladies guys don't care <laughs> Store is just gutted. There's a hard hat down there. It's like a little food kiosk. There's like a teller, a bank teller or something. These are keys. Yeah, some sort of, it's just a little post office. Who would not want to eat at Jenna's Dollar Dog? This is the area where I believe the famous boy and the bear sculpture resided for most of its time here. Taking three years to complete, it was designed to bring happiness to others, as were all Marshall's sculptures, which meant a high-traffic mall was the ideal showplace for his art. I check this old uh, phone. It's like a prayer phone. Look, free calls. Receive God's daily blessings. So it was like a prayer phone or something, or you could at least call. We are now entering the Hudson's building, which is a truly massive four-floor department store. Dude, somebody like did all these writings on Urbex Shot 7. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
See the escalators over there? We definitely gotta go up there. This is the cosmetic and jewelry area. Dark now, each counter used to be brightly lit. Yeah, they had an upstairs and a downstairs. Uh, doesn't look like anything, but... It smells like a fire down here. Maybe this is where the fire was. The vast basement was a store in and of itself, with almost 200,000 square feet. This is where the noise came from. Dude, this one just got gutted. came from in here. Is that you? Oh, okay. I was like... It's just a bunch of storage. Yeah. Mall storage it has to be because there's like an Easter bunny in it. So this was, this is where they kept decorations, so that they could change them out. In the 1990s, the mall began to have elaborate animated displays during the holiday season, which included Cinderella and Peter Pan. Over the decades, they also had such affairs as car shows, fashion shows, and circuses. The mall went all out for their 25th anniversary, holding a two-week-long celebration with movies, fashion shows, bands, and even a game show event. Dude, you're gonna open that door and the cops just gotta be right there. This is a cool, whatever it was. Um, I wonder if they just stockpiled them in here. This looks like it was more like, yeah, being used for, to store some stuff for Dr. Eric.
Stein's Optometry opened in 1956 in the mall and moved here where the former Big Boy restaurant was located. Contact lens. Oh, that's a vision test for preschool. Oh, yeah. There's what? still, like, toothpaste and everything they had in there. Whoa. It was this guy's happy birthday. They made him this thing. Drink heavily, lots of cake. And then they all signed it. We still have a bunch of old lenses. Yeah, that's class right there. We want some gator shoes, maybe. After it was enclosed, they still left an outdoor courtyard, but as you can see by this 1971 photograph, the mall used to be much more open. This sculpture was known as the Great Lakes Waterhole by Lily Sarinen. She also created small sculptures around the courtyard of famous Michigan landmarks, like the Mackinac Bridge seen here. Today, the courtyard is almost unrecognizable, except for the tattered awnings. It's a nice little courtyard. Oh, this must be like another graphics shop here or something. Oh, tattoo parlor. Check this. That's a fancy inlay. Here's... Are these like tattoos that they did? Oh yeah, dude, check this out. These are tattoos that they have done. Like some old snapshots. A lot of kids' faces. Warning, once the paperwork has been filled, there can be no refund. Remember, tattoos are permanent. Apparently they were known for... Oh, yeah, check. What? Here's all the, here's the tattoo rooms. This was like the waiting room here. Just a little tiny room, but... I was hoping there'd be like the chair still, but obviously that is, uh, ew. Oh, come, dude, this is part of, I, now I don't know the terminology, but this, is this not the, this has something to do with the actual inking. The ink would be in there. Okay, that's what I thought. Oh my gosh, <laughs> it's time for the place the fun. <laughs> the Dark Knight. <laughs> the Dark Knight Blu-rays. Yeah, look, here's some uh, designs and stuff too. They left back here. This must have been like their break room or something because they got it like signed and stuff. It's really weird because it like runs behind the tattoo things. And there's light, there was light fixtures here. And there's a doorway back here. I can get to it. Jeez, it's like sealed. Also an interesting note is the mall's architect, Victor Gruen, eventually openly disliked his original open-air mall design and preferred the enclosed malls with chain stores that came later. employee room, manager's office,
Here's a uh, sales sheet for some lenses. Oh, there's a whole bunch. Backing lists and all that sort of information. Here's like a, an old display. So they could change their display out and stuff. It's a nice mural. This and the Motown mural were painted around 2013 on the walls outside the anchor stores. This dumb shit that somebody just set a fire a chair. It's a safe right there that somebody took and chucked out, dude. Now that's some good security right there. This place is such a labyrinth. Like, it is just crisscrossed and every which way. This entertainment center is in the former TJ Maxx. Other anchors were Penny's, Kohl's, Target, and Montgomery Ward. There's also Kroger's grocery store besides Hudson's for many years. This was 100% like a kid's play area. Photo, this is a photo booth. And there's some Toy Story stuff. Streamers over there. The Imagine area. That is creepy <laughs> for Imagine area. Candy man. Look at uh amusement park rides. Ride tickets, all rides. They had actual rides in here? I'm sure they were little things, but still. Here's a back office. This is you, Justin. Bugs life. While the mall itself never had a movie theater, the Northland Theater was a separate building located opposite the mall and opened in 1966. It was called the Incomparable Showplace for Fine Motion Pictures and would transform the lobby into the theme of its current movie such as when the first airport movie was released in 1970. It became the Northland Airport Terminal. Today, the building is in use as a church. Also separate from the mall was the Northland Playhouse, which was this unique geodesk design, the same featured at Epcot in Florida. The stage theater had such famous performers as Mae West, Zaza Gabor, and Red Button. In 1966, it became teen nightclub The Mump, which saw such famous bands as MC5 and Bob Seger, before it was eventually demolished. The mall itself saw many famous people at events over the years. At Northland Mall fans lined up to see Michael as he was hustled into the Sam Goody record store. In 1998, Michael Jackson took a shopping trip to Sam Goody's record store, and in 2005, Kanye West had a small show in the mall. Y'all give it up for Kanye West! Despite these later events, beginning in the 1980s, the mall had become the frequent scene of shootings and robberies, which scared many customers for visiting, and the annual shoppers dropped down from Northland's peak of 18 million to half of that. As a result, the anchors began to vacate. Then, in 2014, something happened that will be all too familiar to us in recent years. <laughs> It's the cell phone video that sparked outrage. Security at Northland Mall holding down Mackenzie Cochran as he gasps for air. Death at Northland Mall. 25-year-old Mackenzie Cochran died after being pepper sprayed and held down by security guards. The whole incident caught on cell phone. The 25-year-old man who died after being pepper sprayed cuffed him and pinned him to the ground even though he screamed he couldn't breathe. Cochran reportedly showed up at LA Diamonds and said he wanted to kill someone. Security was called, and here you see Cochran getting closer to one security guard who then hits him with pepper spray, and Cochran takes a few steps back. Security guards are reportedly telling him to leave, and then they spray him again with more pepper spray and take him to the ground. We need answers from Northland Mall. Did a crime occur? 
Yes, I believe a crime did occur. The Oakland County prosecutor deciding no charges will be filed against security guards in the Northland Mall death investigation. Those security guards who were not certified by police are not criminally responsible for their actions. Now, two civil suits have already been filed, one against the mall, one against the former security company. We will stay all over this story to bring you the very latest as it unfolds. Lyman Southfield, Simon Shaykat, 7 Action News. Finally, in 2014, the mall owners defaulted on their mortgage, and the mall was closed for good the following year. The Hudson's Anchor Store, which had become Macy's by then, closed exactly 61 years to the day of its grand opening. The Southfield Public Arts Commission purchased the 11 remaining sculptures, including the boy and the bear, which now resides in the city library. The city purchased the property and demolished the Target and Firestone buildings in 2017. They unsuccessfully tried to solicit Amazon to purchase the property. In 2020, the land and its remaining structures, including the Hudson's building, were sold for redevelopment. It is proposed to become a market rate housing development with some retail components called the Northland City Center. The development is estimated to cost several hundred million dollars. No work has yet begun. Sadness to see a mall that was so vibrant and vital at one time. It was gorgeous. Out of today, Winkleman, Swibacks, Alco, all the ones that I we grew up with. Never in my time did I think I would see this. Malls are going away, and you know, it's a real loss. I mean, it really is. There's a lot of places you think of all the people that worked here, and you know where they've gone now. Always crowded out. It was a wonderful place. I, I looked at it now, and I'm kind of sad, but I still have it.